In this science experiment, you will observe your circadian rhythm by tracking your own sleep. You probably already know that we spend a portion of our day asleep and a portion of it awake. But how does your body know how much to sleep or how much to stay awake? Our bodies have what is called a circadian rhythm, which is our internal clock. The circadian rhythm is approximately 24 hour cycle or two cycles around an analog clock. So what proportion of the day do we sleep? In a 24 hour day, we typically spend about 16 hours of it awake and about eight hours of it asleep. This means that on average, we spend about two thirds of our time of the day awake and one third of our day asleep. That's a lot of time asleep. So what is our body and brain doing during all of that time? During sleep, our brains act very differently than they do during the day. Our body helps clear away waste from the brain that is created during the day. Our brains change their activity levels to allow our bodies to rest and for us to be able to dream. And our brains even store away new information into our memories during sleep. But how do we know that all of this is happening during sleep? Neuroscientists found ways to measure the electrical communications of our neurons in the brain. Our brain is composed of neurons that convert electrical signals into chemical ones to communicate with one another. These neurons work together to form networks, and these many networks are entangled together to form our brains. So how can we measure what the brain and body are doing during sleep? Although we can't currently directly measure what the brain is doing during sleep at home, we can measure what the body is doing with wearable devices. And we can use that information to infer what our brain is doing during sleep. Before we go to sleep, we are fully alert or awake. Our brain signals to our body to relax our muscles so that we can fall asleep. Before sleep or during stage zero, we have more body movements and our brains transmit both alpha and beta waves. Once we fall asleep, our brains temporarily paralyze our body so we don't act out our dreams. Scientists discovered that our heart rates slowed down during sleep and that our heart rate varies more when we transition from one stage of sleep to another. Therefore, this variation in our heart rate can be used to infer what stage of sleep we are in. After we've been asleep for a while, our brain and body fully submerge into deep sleep. Algorithms using our biological data then predict when our brain cycles through each of the three sleep stages approximately every 90 minutes while we are asleep. From this information, how can we figure out what our own brain is doing during sleep? First, you'll have to use the device when you're asleep to get sleep tracking data. Once you get your sleep tracking data back from the device, it will look something like this. The device will measure your body movement and heart rate variability and associate them with very general stages of sleep, like deep sleep, light sleep, and being awake. In the app, it will show you the summary data after each night of sleep. It will also show you the more detailed information of the sleep cycles below that. Let's put together what all of this means with our sleep tracking data. When we wake up during a night's sleep, the accelerometer detects our body movement. This wakefulness is known as stage zero of sleep and is associated with both alpha and beta brain waves. During light sleep, there is little movement and heart rate variability occurs between sleep stages. These stages of light sleep are known as stage one and two and are associated with the theta brain waves. Deep sleep has very similar physiological measures to stage one and two of sleep, but it is associated with the slowest brain waves, the delta waves. Currently, these devices don't have a physiological measure associated with rapid eye movement or REM sleep. This is known as the fourth stage of sleep and is when dreaming occurs. Now that we know how to interpret our sleep tracking data, we can design an experiment to better understand our sleep and circadian rhythm. Regular sleep consists of an attempted eight hour night sleep with a consistent bedtime and wake time each day. After you've established a week of regular sleep, the second week you will add a daytime intervention to see how it impacts your regular nighttime sleep schedule. Some ideas for interventions could include using a phone screen before bed for 30 minutes each night, adding a 30 minute afternoon nap at the same time each day, drinking a single caffeinated drink during the morning or early afternoon, 
performing 20 minutes of exercise right before bed or eating a snack each night right before bed. After you've chosen your intervention, you can start your experiment by establishing a regular sleep schedule. Each night before bed, wear your personal device to track your sleep, maintain a regular sleep schedule for one week, recording your total sleep time and time in each sleep stage every day. Calculate the average daily sleep time and time in each sleep stage over one week. Add your intervention to your day and repeat these steps for one additional week with the sleep intervention. After you've compiled your data from your experiment, you can answer if and how the intervention impacted your sleep. I'd love to know what interventions you try, so let me know in the comments below. You can also answer the question of if your sleep is similar to others by helping them track their sleep with a wearable device. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so we know to make more content like this. If you'd like to know how to do this project for yourself, we have more detailed written instructions at the link in this video's description. If you'd like to see more projects like this, check out more projects from me and our other scientists by visiting sciencebuddies.org. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.